Hello everyone, welcome back and thank you for joining me, The Televisionary. Episode 3 of Screen Time with The Televisionary is here and we will be talking about the hot topic show, controversial show, and raw show of 13 Reasons Why, Season 2 on Netflix. I have a special guest uh, that has come on and she is studying this material uh, in uh, her for her degree. She has worked with students in a high school setting and she finished the show before me. Yes, she finished the show before the televisionary. So welcome her to this video and to my channel. Uh, she really dives into this show and dissects it and also talks about the um, et epidemics that are going on in today's world, today's society, today's schools. So uh, please enjoy. Um, thank you for welcoming me back. Uh, continue that love and the support. Share the video. Follow me on Twitter at Adam Keen of TV3. Subscribe to the channel for more episodes of Screen Time with Televisionary. Like the video and please share your thoughts and comments because this is definitely a show that has people on one or the other of sides. And you'll be surprised where I sit on this and also the ones that I interview here. Uh, but stay tuned for the first interview and I might be having these video, these interviews are long, so I might have three separate episodes, three separate videos, just for 13 Reasons Why Season 2. And yes, there will be spoilers, so if you haven't finished yet, please finish, then come back. All right, Screen Time with the Televisionary, Episode 3. My first interview is with this young lady right here. So, enjoy, guys. All right, so I have my first guest. Her name is Tiandra. Hi. And she finished season two of 13 Reasons Why. She also watched the first season last year. And she also has worked with students in the past. Uh, what is your degree? My uh, bachelor's degree is in Human Development and Family Studies. And I am currently getting my master's um, in counseling, focused on school counseling. And I did do, uh, I was working in a school district and I worked with primarily junior high students, but I did see a lot of the senior high students as well. And that is what intrigued me first to watch the first season of 13 Reasons Why and then to continue on to season two. Okay, so we definitely knew that season one was obviously a controversial hot topic show that ignited a firestorm on whichever side you sat on, whether you agreed or you didn't agree, and that is why Netflix brought it uh, to our attention. Would you say that the way they portrayed most of the storylines this season, from the drug addiction to the homelessness to the sexual assault to the suicide and to the gun violence, would you say that they did that well and they did not over dramatize it or glamorize it like some people and the critics are saying after working in the school system you know what it's like would you say they did it right even though they had to stretch it becoming you know even though it was because of hollywood they stretched it absolutely there were some dramatized parts to it you have to you have to take whether it's a movie a tv show whatever it is you have to add a little bit of dramatics to it was it glamorized? Absolutely not. And yes, these things happen in high schools. They happen everyday life. Um, there's drug addiction in schools. There's suicide. There are sexual assaults. And a lot of times the students don't speak up about it because they're afraid, quite like we've seen with Jessica and some of the other girls that were sexually assaulted in season one and season two. It happens. And I don't believe in any way, shape, or form it was glamorized. I think it gave the raw details of what high school can be like and is for some students. And do you think that the reason why they portrayed the school wanting to hide it due to the baseball team and due to the money and the power and the politics of Bryce's family because they wanted to put a blind eye because they did not want to admit, you know, I once heard someone say when you say something it becomes real and when it's real they're afraid. So is that why they portrayed it the way they did? I would definitely say yes. Um, oftentimes, like you said, you once you say it out loud, you can't ever take that back. You said it out loud, it's out there, it's in the open, and it makes it real. So by not admitting to the problems or trying to hide it, they wanted to portray their school as this stuff doesn't happen here because we protect our students when in reality, it was happening and they weren't protecting them because they were just taking everything and brushing it under the table. And that's exactly how I feel. And you actually finished the season before I did and you warned me about it. You and you and your boyfriend started it and you, and you finished it and you warned me about it. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, I was trying to watch a couple episodes at a time, and it was definitely, it was a powerful show. You know, as you said, it was raw. It was the nitty-gritty. They didn't hold back. They pushed the envelope. It tackled the hot topics and the epidemic issues of bullying, of gun violence, of sexual assault, of suicide. And I think the show also did this to bring so much awareness because we have to figure out how to help these souls, help these, mm -hmm. these, these broken souls that are going through these you know these turbulent times that even tackled some alcoholism it, it, it tackled the drugs uh, what was one of the most controversial storylines you saw that is actually happening in today's day and age especially in the school system I think the way they portrayed a lot of the sexual assault um, statistically one in four women and one in six men are sexually assaulted daily and they portrayed some scenes that I choked up at and I was, you know, I thought, wow, like, this is real. And I think that's one of the most controversial things, especially if you look at the bathroom scene with Tyler. Um, a lot of people think that that should never have been, you know, viewed on tape, should never have been discussed, but in reality it happens. A lot of times it does happen, your athletes do it to your non-athletes, your nerds, whatever you want to call them, and nobody wants to admit that that's actually happening for many reasons, because they don't believe that that actually could happen, because they don't want to actually put it out there that one of their star athletes is doing something like that. I also think, um, and it's not necessarily controversial, but one thing that I really paid attention to because of the position that I'm going to school for being a school counselor was the school counselor who when Hannah admitted that she had been raped or whatever, he did nothing. You're a mandated reporter. Whether that means, you know, even if you have this slight suspicion, you call and you let someone else handle it. You don't brush under the table. Yes, he showed his guilt. Obviously, he lost his job because he testified and showed that the school had brushed under the table. Um, and rightfully so, he should have been guilty. But that just shows that the school wasn't protecting. They were brushing things under the table and as mandated reporters, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Was there anything that you felt they pushed too much that you didn't agree with as a storyline or... Uh, no. As a, no? No, I think they they showed everything that happens. Um, a lot of times, bullying is a two-way street. So, yes, Hannah was bullied. She started retaliating, fighting back. Clay retaliated, fought back. But in the end, she reached out for help from the school. Uh, she left those tapes for people to read them. So every, everything was real. And 90% of the cases bullying is kind of a two-way street but there's always one person or one party that pushes it too far takes it too far I know that from experiences in my own high school when I was in school there were some situations that you know the one party or the other always took it too far and the blame always seemed to be put on the person that was retaliating because they had had enough and instead of looking at the people that were actually doing the real damage we put it on the person that retaliates because they had had enough of the picking on. And everything's a domino effect. Mm -hmm. From the bullying to the sexual assault to the gun violence, everything's a domino effect. So was there a character that you felt really had good development this season who really basically stole the show? I would say Justin. He was a character who at the end of season one had realized that he saw Jessica's assault, he covered it up, he stood by, you know, a friend and kind of ruined his relationship with his girlfriend. And you see, you know, at the beginning of season two, he's not in some of the episodes because he went in hiding, ran away. And as you see him be brought back, you see how he stands up to Bryce Walker and the jocks. And yes, he is addicted to drugs, but he did that because he was dealing with his own pain in a way that he couldn't. And I feel that he had the best development because he realized that he had hurt Hannah, he'd hurt Jessica, and he did all of it because of his friends that he had, and that wasn't truly who he was. And as you see throughout the rest of the episodes and that, how he develops a friendship with the other um, characters that, you know, are feeling the same way. 
they could have helped, they didn't, and they all stood back and were basically silent. And sometimes I feel that being silent is the worst form of bullying. You don't stand up, you don't try and help that right. person, you don't let them know that um, you're there to help them, you watch things happen and nothing is said. That, that I think, can even be more harmful than the actual bullying itself because then it really gives the validation that no one cares. No one cares. I agree. I can agree with you on that. And I definitely think there was development with Dempsey. Oh, yeah. And also with Brandon towards mm -hmm. the end. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you see a season three or do you think that the negative could ruin the show for a season three? Do you see them? I see a season three. I, I truly think that there is more support behind 13 Reasons Why than the negativity. And I can understand the negativity. If you are triggered by some of the things and the topics that are in this, Absolutely. You know, it, it's hard to watch. You can be triggered, but then don't watch it. Exactly. Uh, don't it, watch it. Don't watch it. And don't they, bitch about it. They give you warnings. Um, they, they, they have the hotline They have on the there. hotline, and they, they talk about it all the time. And that's the most important thing is, you know, if you are watching these warnings, that if you truly are a person, which I understand, if you're a person that can't watch something like that because you've been through it or whatever, I get that. Just don't watch it. The people that can watch it and you know, do like it, don't take it away from them because it really does show what high school is and can be like. And instead of complaining that these things shouldn't be portrayed, I really think we should be talking about them. I think once we start talking about them and start opening the eyes that this is what happens, we can protect our adolescent and our children better. And sometimes I think the people that are complaining about it are afraid of it mm -hmm. or they see it and they don't want to admit it and they know this show is going to open this door up and maybe they've gone through it themselves. I definitely think, you know, you and I have talked before and we've agreed on some of those. So I definitely think it's a good show to be out there. And yes, if you can't handle it mentally or physically, don't watch it, but don't bitch about it. And, you know, give honest, you know, give authentic opinions um, like she just did. Um, definitely being in the field of studying this and understanding this and going through this and dealing with this. Uh, this show doesn't hold back. Mm -mm. And if you watch the after, uh, after, After the 13 yep. Reasons, they, you know, the producers, the directors, the writers, the cast, the crew, and experts, yep. doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, they talk about, you know, suicide prevention. They talk about this. So I think the, the message you and I have talked about is if you know someone needs help, help them. Help them. Absolutely. And don't get me wrong, there were scenes more so in season two than season one that were hard for me to watch. I think I cried almost every episode when I got to episode 13 with the bathroom scene. It was a very hard scene for me to watch, but the reality is that is happening. We shouldn't just not talk about it because not talking about it's not taking it away. And I think 13 Reasons Why's message is this happens and don't, don't be the bystander that doesn't say anything. You know, if you don't feel that you can stand up and help that person themselves, go find a trusted adult. And if the trusted adult or the school or whoever you're going to is not giving you help, give them resources. A lot of these resources out there, they're anonymous. You call the tip line, they will either talk you out of what you're going through or tell you where you can go to get help without um, your parents knowing. Um, it's hard because sometimes the parents don't want to see that there's an issue either and the parents don't want to admit that you know they need help or whatever and a lot of times there are sources and places out there that will help you without parental consent. Well thank you for joining me Chandra well, and uh, we'll me. definitely have to see if we have a season three which I think we will because Selena yes. Gomez is behind it and I don't think she's going to give up, even though we have these negative Nancys out there, which that's okay. Every show brings questions. Every show is political. You're, you're on one side or the other. So thank you again, and thank you, Tiandra. Thank you.